Good morning. Day three of Five Ponds trip. This is going to be our last day out for a number of reasons. One, just we're having some, I'm having foot issues. The dog is having some sore feet. He's tired. And last night, my mattress popped this hole. Uh, tried blowing it up, but it, it drained down in 10, 15 minutes. So for half the night, I had no mattress, uh, so I didn't sleep too well. We're heading out. We got about a 10 and a half mile trip. It's 8.20. We're all packed up. Everything's been taken care of. We just got to put our packs on and head out. So the dog anxiously looking down the trail where we're going to go. But I think it's because he heard something. So You can see we're all cleaned up. Cleaner than we found it. And we're going to head out. I'll see you down the trail. Nice and peaceful. Wanted you to see that monster white pine right there. Three and a half feet. Another one right there. It's a good two feet. Ah, it's a beautiful little area. Just across the Asugachi. You can see where it widens out a little bit right there. The older beaver dams are nice. There's been so much mud pushed up on top of them. You can walk across them. Yeah, it's mushy, but it's the newer beaver dams. 
They have no mud on them yet. So it's just a ridge of small sticks and it drops off. Those are the tough ones. If I see some, I'll bring it to you. Oh. Can't get them out of the water. I'm coming. Just left the junction. We're now in the high falls loop again. Doing the path that we didn't come in on. Yeah, eight miles from here. Nice time of year to camp. Good, cool sleeping weather. No bugs up here, which in the summertime can be horrendous. A red maple, seed new. Speaking of old beaver dams, this one's like 10 feet wide, maybe more, 12 feet, 15 feet wide. Now this is an easy dam crossing. That was the easiest one so far. <laughs> Looks like the trail crews did some work here. Thank you for your service. I'm going to keep it on because I see a clearing up here. Maybe it'll be worth keeping the clip going. Trail made a turn here. I just kind of wandered a little bit. Yeah, so gotcha. It's a very got a lot of oxbows in it. Very old river. A hiking buddy right there.
waiting for me. He's like, why do you keep stopping? Actually, some blue sky up there. Looks like it is going to clear. Yeah, just in time for a nice ride home. This is one of the campsites that are scattered along the Asugachi, so you can canoe up. I don't know if there's another tent site back here, but usually there, there's a couple. Oh, this one looks even better. There we go. Nice brown water. Come on, pup. Let's go. Here comes the torpedo. For a dog who was walking a little stiff last night, he's loosened up quite a bit. Me, on the other hand, I'm stiffer today than I was last night. I got him by a few years, though. Next main highlight on this section. Hang on, I got some pine needles on my back. Is High Rock, which is just a little overlook of the river. Yeah, probably in about three miles. I'll give you a view there. Sugar maples coming out, nice color. You can just see the river through trees. See if I got a better view here, and then we'll close up. I think this is that beaver dam I mentioned that goes for a couple hundred yards. I'll see what I can do. Yuck. Yeah. Lovely. Uh... <laughs> Probably should have gone on the other side. And I'm just rearranging some stuff. Definitely gonna be wet feet. Ugh. Question's gonna be how high up my legs can I expect to get wet? So far, so good. Let's try this side. Well, I'm gonna pull up. I need my poles. That's the half of it. And you see, he's got a foot or two of dam right there. But you see, Extends into the forest. Let's have another dam further down. All right, I gotta make this next stretch. But I'm probably gonna cut through there and see how far it goes into the woods.
Well, I ended up walking right through this last bit of slop. There was no way around it. Either get it in the woods or get it here. And I knew it was firm here in the trail. So my feet are wet and muddy. All right. Talk about old beaver dams. Look at this one, how overgrown it is. That's the trail I just came on. As you can see, it's a well overgrown beaver dam. Uh, I'll try to keep you on it. Keep you running. Let's see what we can do here. A little mucky. Well, gotta put you away for that because I gotta use my poles to poke for firm ground. It was easier than I thought. Right along the grassy edge there it was pretty firm. I think. But a lot of beaver dams. This is the water side. There's a steep drop off if it's an old dam. You slip off the crest of that dam that you're walking on. <laughs> and you're over your head in water. And sometimes on the downhill side, it's a steep drop off. If the dam is Sometimes 10 feet high. In the case of the previous, not this one, but the previous one, they must have had another dam further down the stream, and that kept the water elevated on the backside so you don't see the drop off. But plus, all the sticks that you're walking on, a lot of them anyway, are slanted downward. This might. Give you a little slip down that way. What a beautiful view. Ah. I'd love to take you all the way across one of these beaver dams, but it's just not possible. I need my poles. I'll take a picture from the other end. Yeah, essentially had to walk through it, but I had to find the firm parts. Trees are looking beautiful. Hey, pup. I'm coming. Sometimes I like to stop and look. You stop and sniff, I stop and look. Ugh. 
Good thing I got a change of shoes and socks in the car. I don't know if you can see. Oh, you just get in the reflection. There's mud from here to here, and then it's and straight drop off. Not some place you want to fall. Whoa! That's why I like to use poles. Well, I have to say, compared to when I came here last fall, a lot more beaver activity, that's for sure. A lot of these dams have fresh toppings. Amazing critters. There's an unusually shaped fungus. That's pretty cool looking. Interesting. Well, we've been hiking on an old access road for a while. I remember if we're done with beaver dams. But been traveling through a lot of these spruce fir stands. An occasional open areas with more hardwoods. Coming up to the stream. If the water looks good, I may stop and filter a little water for the rest of the day. Yeah, still brown water. Everything is because it comes from beaver swamps. All right, moving on. It's eleven fifteen. We should be getting a high rock soon. We're going to take lunch there before we head out the last three and a half miles. Or is it four miles? I forget which. Bring you back on 
when we get to High Rock on the Oswegatchie. And here we are at the junction to the High Rock side trail. We're going to go take that, sit down, have a little lunch. Then we'll continue on. I'll bring you back when we get there. Nice. Oh, someone's here. Very well, yourself? Sorry, ran into a couple canoers here. Uh, we would stop for lunch. I'm gonna try to get you some views of the marsh because the leaves on the other side are spectacular. Let's see what's down here. Back on the trail. You hoof it through the woods, and then you come across something like this. That's beautiful. Old beaver meadow filled in. Trees, the color, wow. All right, I'm coming. He's only checking on me because I got his snacks.
This is clear. Another old road. Alright. Moving on. <laughs> Dog's all keyed up now. Hey bear! I'm just saying that. Make sure he knows where we are. I thought I saw a lot of bear droppings. Yeah, bear. Let's get a view of this while we can. Come on. Oh. Sorry, pup. He smells bear. Alright, right, we're getting close to the end, if memory serves. Now comes the end of our adventure. Let me sign out. We have to go over there about another two, three hundred yards to the road, and then about a little less than half a mile up the road is our car. Hope everyone enjoyed it. I did. Topped it off by seeing a bear at the end. Awesome. All right. This is Ranger 1 and Ranger signing off.